Good evening. Welcome to Wacky Wednesday. We're on the show here with the awesome Carl show. He's uh, interacting on our tinychat.com slash third party venue, which you guys can get to at our main page, americasthirdparty.com, by clicking the video chat button. And you'll see us right there. We are going to talk about some social issues that are really tough to talk about. You know, I have made a video that many people think is uh, disturbing. Uh, the video is my blackface video. It's essentially an impersonation of Barack Obama, which I had to do in blackface because you can see how silly it would be if I did it in whiteface. Now that's just silly. Well, make no mistake about it. I had to do the video in blackface, so please, understand that there's nothing racist about it. But I want you to also realize that racism extends in both directions. There's black racism against white people. Let me show you something that came out a few years ago. This is a video of essentially a girl looking for a job. Yeah, so your version could be different. That was an example of black people laughing at a white girl walking into a store looking for a job. Now, racism goes both ways, okay? It's not something you can just say is a one-way thing. I believe in integration. I believe that we can have an integrated world where we can all be treated equally. That's why I don't support affirmative action. I believe that it unfairly treats white people. We should all be treated based on the content of our character, not the color of our skin. And affirmative action clearly treats people of color with more preferential treatment. They give better access to college, better scholarships, etc., etc. I was a victim of affirmative action. I was number one in my high school class out of 770 students, top scores, valedictorian, highest SAT scores, 98 percentile in the country. Yet I was turned down by four major universities, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and Stanford all turned me down. Instead, they accepted people with B-minus averages who were minorities. They got an education, and that is why I am currently running for president. Because I don't need an education to run for president. I, in fact, have enough information at my disposal on the internet to gather a huge amount of information and keep clocking in more and more knowledge. Whereas schools are confining and limiting, they don't think out of the box, whereas we think out of the box. We, in fact, wrote a book called Hybrid Capitalism, which gives this country a template, a blueprint for economic survival, where the government can make money back, get a return on investment, and lower your, the burden on your tax dollars. Without going into detail there, I just want to talk about other issues that are pending right now. So, Carl, what do you got there? Is that uh, like a cartoon background. Interesting. The original Super Mario Brothers from the NES. Oh, wow, yeah. Nintendo Entertainment System. That was an Still interactive retro. game. Very retro. And, uh, you know, some, some people really learn from games like that. You know, not enough video games are educational. I really wish we had more educational games that were uh, as popular. This one was not educational, David. It wasn't? This one was basically you go through, try to beat the bad guy. Oh. Duck Hunt um, kind of was okay because you constantly, it came with Super Mario Brothers in some cases. Okay. And you had a little sampler gun and you actually shot at the birds. Okay. The ducks. All right. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, very interesting. I want everyone to know that, that I am not. Hey, neighbor. Welcome again to this neighborhood. I'd like to show you something. I am not Mr. Rogers, okay? And this isn't the garden of your mind, but uh, we could certainly play that, that video for you a little bit later. I want to talk about the situation in Egypt. That's my number one topic. Analysts fear more strife and oppression in Egypt, now dominated by a military crackdown that's turning out to be brutal. Hundreds of people are, are dying as a result of this crackdown against the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, what happened in Egypt is directly related to Barack Obama. Barack Obama did not answer the phone calls from Hosni Mubarak, the former president of 34 years of Egypt, when Hosni Mubarak wanted help from America. 
Barack Obama turned a blind eye to his request for a fair and decent election at a certain time. So as a result of Obama instead turning to supporting Arab Spring, which was a un unbacked program, which in my opinion violates the Logan Act, one of the most important things that we have is the Logan Act, which uh, uh, tells people you can't go influence politics overseas without the approval of the president. Well, Barack Obama never gave total approval for Arab Spring officially. So therefore, the money that went into the protest rallies that triggered destabilization in Egypt ultimately was a violation of the Logan Act. Now, none of that's being talked about in the news. You're not hearing about any of these specifics about how Obama's tied to the Egyptian strife, but clearly by Barack Obama turning a blind eye to Hazi Mubarak in the early days, it led to the civil unrest that we have today. It's flipping on both sides. Now the supporters of Morsi, who uh, was arrested by the military a, a week or so ago, those supporters are now being killed in the streets of Cairo. The imposition of martial law that followed will probably put Egypt on a path to another dictatorship. And I understand that the military is assigning provincial governors uh, to uh, positions are going to military leaders. So this country of Egypt is the linchpin in a meltdown in the Middle East, which Barack Obama triggered many, many months ago. This is a process of ignoring an ally of 34 years and then going ahead and supporting protest rallies under the aegis that this is democracy in action when it clearly isn't. John Kerry said uh, publicly that uh, this happens in, in democratic nations frequently. He told the Egyptian press that a week ago. John Kerry, our current Secretary of State, is oblivious to the reality that it doesn't happen in democracies. In fact, Egyptians asked John Kerry, uh, have you ever had your president deposed and arrested by the military and the entire military taking over America? John Kerry is uh, completely out of his league. He is playing party politics when he, we should be working toward diplomacy. And Barack Obama is doing nothing toward diplomacy. He canceled a summit meeting with, with Vladimir Putin, of all people simply because of the Edward Snowden incident where Russia gave Edward Snowden asylum. We are now allowing Edward Snowden to hijack world peace and Barack Obama is playing into the hand of doing that. And there's even talk about us not even being in the Olympics because of this. Right. He's trying to start or trigger World War III. You're right. He's trying to start a world war. Mm -hmm. He's doing exactly, uh, or well, similar moves that a lot of dictators do. To, um, look at World War One and Two. True. Certain things happened in the chain of events, and that turned out to be a whole bunch of different small wars turned into a world, a world war. You're right. We're looking at right now. Where there's a lot of small wars going on, and eventually couple uh, another half dozen countries get involved you're looking at what can be considered a world war. you know if you really look at the technical aspect of world war we could look back to 2001 and the coalition of the willing and Bush declaring that 45 nations supported his attack on Iraq we could call that the beginning of World War three we could in fact historians may do that someday if the wars continue to spin out of control all of this was a plan put in play by Henry Kissinger back in the 1970s. He had a concept called low intensity conflict that he promoted through uh, CFR, Council on Foreign Relations. Henry Kissinger is the kingpin of all of these activities working with the Council on Foreign Relations. This guy has essentially triggered the preemptive strike policy of George W. Bush. He was behind that as well. So clearly there's a, a push by the World Bank and the IMF and people, big players, to do this, to start wars. Backed by banks and banks backed Hitler. And Obama is just as bad as Hitler. He's only moving a lot slower than Hitler did. Well, actually, uh, Hitler took 15 years to rise to power. So technically, he's not moving that much slower than Hitler. Uh, I believe Obama is sabotaging our economy, Carl. I do. I really believe that he has instrumentally sabotaged our foreign policy. Now, we don't really have a clear vision as to where we're going in Afghanistan. The people of Afghanistan and Hamid Karzai have asked us to leave, yet we continue to stay. In fact, we're planning on staying way past 2014. 
And that's part of why I believe Barack Obama is failing. You know, the, the journalist, this is important. I think all of you need to know this. The journalist that exposed the truth about Afghanistan and about General McChrystal declaring that Obama was disengaged, that journalist, M.M. Hastings, Michael Hastings, is dead. He died about a month ago in a car crash in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Michael Hastings was the winner of the Polk Award for his effort to get the truth about Afghanistan to the forefront. And many people believe that he was on top of a story that was going to reveal some uh, very spurious activities of the CIA. And that that is the reason why his car suddenly burst into flames at 4.30 in the morning at, at Florence and Melrose Avenue. Very suspicious death of Michael Hastings, a great investigative journalist. So if our investigative journalists are dying, the NSA is watching everything we do, the Justice Department is monitoring AP email, we have a problem. Our process in this country requires the free press. In order for politics to be engaging and communicative and for compromises to be forged, we need the free press, but this is clearly not happening right now under the existing leadership of Obama. He's allowing the NSA to do this. And what's really disturbing is at first he said that it was okay uh, that the NSA w was doing this and he even told Charlie Rose on the Charlie Rose show that uh, that we have been transparent, he said. Well, make no mistake about it. We've been transparent. Uh, one of the FISA uh, orders was overturned. And Charlie Rose said, one? You're saying that's transparency? One FISA order overturned for warrantless wiretapping? Hello? So clearly, he knew he was on the wrong page there. Well, what I like uh, is Tom made, uh, made fun of Obama wiretapping. He basically walked around. He, Tom made is a comedian, mm -hmm. and he walked around being filmed with a, a can, uh, with a big giant um, microphone. You know the ones they use for um, when they, they hold over um, people talking mm -hmm. um, during like TV shows, like old school type. Right, right. And it was so funny. People were turning around saying turning around and saying, what are you doing? And uh, basically, he said, oh, it's okay. We, we do this now. The government listens to your phone calls. Now that we're not hiding it, we're doing it in public. Right. The only agency in the government that really is listening to the American people is the NSA. <laughs> that's that's another, another joke we can draw from that. This is a real problem. BC News over at Battle Camp says, yeah, once they start killing those who would examine them under the right light of day, we're in deep S. I assume you're saying S implies the, uh, the crap word. That's correct. We're in deep doo-doo right now. And because our party is dedicated to total transparency, we want uh, the White House to be like a, a daily show integrated with C-SPAN. We want you to be polled daily and interacting. I want to be able to go up to congressmen with cameras and approach them in real time and ask them about the bills that we need to start slashing, the cuts in the budget that need to happen. I want this entire presidency to be 100% transparent as opposed to what we got with Barack Obama who talked the talk but certainly did not walk the walk. Billy David, he's only using about, if, if this, about 1% of transparency. Heck, I think most Americans would be happy with the, at least 10 to 15% transparency but we're not seeing anything we're seeing lies after lies after lies he basically will cover or lie then cover up a lie then lie cover up that lie and then gets caught in that lie he covers it up with the bigger lie right and people see it they do they see the lies and they are tired of Barack Obama you said that his approval rating was down to 40 percent that's what you said and I believe you 100 percent I I believe well, that I know, and I believe that Barack Obama is clearly on a, at a, on a course with what I believe to be uh, crashing our economy, angering our neighbors. Is the impeach Obama a movement? What's interesting about the, uh, the overpass movement? Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that is it dropped his approval ratings two or three percent. I know that's not much over an entire weekend when they did that, that last weekend they did their over, uh, overpass protesting so that's pretty cool 
Exactly. Well, that's that's certainly part of uh, his plan. Sethoros wrote, part of the reason why Snowden won't give himself up in Russia is because he fears he'll be tortured. I agree. You know, the torturing and rendition, the idea of sending people over to their other countries to be tortured, that's been going on under Barack Obama, as it was under George W. Bush. Rendition and torturing it has been going on. That story actually broke, by the way, in the New York Times, but was pushed to the back pages because of another story, the Boston Marathon bombings. But a guy did an independent study of Barack Obama's activities regarding torture and rendition, and it's the same as, Barack, as George W. Bush. Very, very messed up. All right, I am convinced that Barack Obama has lied to us. I was on that, that bandwagon in 2008. That's why we started this party. I never would have voted for Barack Obama, and I was a Democrat of 30 years. I saw the handwriting on the wall with this guy. I could see he was lying incessantly through his teeth to get elected. And I'm very concerned that this is a, a repeat pattern, that the next three and a half years will be just the same old, same old coming out of Barack Obama's mouth. Now this thing about the NSA is really disturbing because he has now recanted and said, well, uh, we're going to try to do something to uh, protect uh, certain people uh, from the NSA looking in. Uh, in other words, he's going to implement uh, some sort of an executive order that protects not people, mind you, but corporations. So when it sounded like Obama was making a, a statement a couple days ago in the press about the NSA, because he knew that he was basically up against a storm of, of angry people out there in the population, he made this generic statement about protecting people from the NSA. He's protecting corporations with his executive order. That's not what we're all about. America's third party is dedicated to getting some level of transparency so that the NSA has to answer to a middle middleman somewhere there, like an ombudsman that can oversee the place between the FISA judges and the NSA. So it can say this is not appropriate to target innocent people who aren't doing a dang thing wrong with the use of their phone. And I, I must tell you, everybody who uses their phone is being listened to by the NSA. They're routing all our phone signals and all our internet transmissions through a building in Bullock, Utah. The NSA has a structure that they paid about four and a half billion dollars for that is completely, completely uh, monitoring every single bit of traffic. In fact, the traffic is so hot, Carl, that it is cooled down by generators that are costing forty million dollars a year to run. Just the air conditioning alone is running 40 million a year just to cool the building down. That's how hot the transmissions are. So you can understand that this wasted oversight of our nation is an example of how badly run our country is. Now, I have to ask you, if a guy like Edward Snowden is able to get military's top secret information, and he didn't even graduate from high school, isn't that a statement, an indictment of our system and how corrupt it is and how completely incompetent it is? that we would allow people like Edward Snowden to be right next to that core of information? I mean, this is absurd. I believe the CIA, the FBI, should be reviewed and given lie detector tests. And I mean everybody, all the way to the top. We've got problems. What's scary about it is sure. he was able to get the information. Yeah, exactly. He got the information. Especially since it's supposed to be so protected. Yeah, so protected and so gu guaranteed free from any uh, foreign spies. Our security in our country has been compromised on all levels across the board. I look at 30 different military plans for uh, aircraft were compromised by hackers in Shanghai and China won't even admit to it. Obama doesn't even have the balls to ask President Xi, did you acknowledge or allow the Shanghai hackers to access US information because if he asked the guy and the guy lied and we showed the world that the president of China was lying we would have a case to take to the UN or to the Hague the fact is these countries are using every means possible to drip into our system and to, to tag and and attack emails and and things that we think are private you know a couple of secret database uh, they were supposedly email programs that were designed to eliminate uh, anybody from watching they've canceled their operations they just closed down because they said we cannot guarantee that your email transmissions are safe 
nobody now can provide encrypted email security services for anybody at this point because they're not sure if they're being watched. So the Democrats and Republicans have pretty much approved this entire takedown of our national freedom, the right to privacy, the Fourth Amendment that is guaranteed in our Constitution. The Democrats and Republicans are on board with, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll make no mistake about it. It's, it's completely transparent. So they're not really concerned about the privacy of the American people. The only well, answer is... I mean, some things sure. have to stay private, but other things do not. Well, and I know. For exa I mean, in government, for example, mm -hmm. there's obviously things that the government does to that would seem wrong well, and probably is mm -hmm. for the American people. Okay. That's why they'll hide it. Um, for example, espionage, sometimes they have to do to right. protect this country. I agree. I, I don't want every single bit of information, uh, you know, allowed open access and, and free sharing on every single level. We have to have layers of security, but come on. They are watching everything the American people are doing as if we're doing something wrong. Most of us are more like Mr. Rogers here, that we just want to have fun in the garden of our mind. You know what this is? What is it? Well, maybe if I press this button. Okay. This is a cassette player with a little cassette in here, and there's nothing written on it. Okay. So we'll just have to play it to see what it is. Do you ever imagine things? Are they scary things? Are they scary things? Yeah, I am imagining scary things, actually. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to play the Mr. Rogers video because there's copyright protection, and I only do that just to give you an example of what the mindlessness of our world has become. I mean, if we were all just like Mr. Rogers and imagining that there are scary things, we would probably uh, be, you know, okay, everything would be fine. But the reality is, it's worse than that. It's worse than anything any of you who watch Mr. Rogers could possibly imagine. We are, we are dealing with a situation that cannot be defined in simple terms anymore. It's even hard for me to explain to you how complicated the corruption in this country is. I can go into great lengths telling you about all the different ways in which the president is failing right now. One of the things that I think is most important, and I want to address this right now, is the possibility that we only have one person in the country able to watch the secret clandestine activities of our treasury, and that is the president. The president is the only person who can oversee the, the secrets of the treasury department and ultimately change what we're doing with the printing of money, with the hiding of funds, with the, uh, the handling of international currency. The president is the only one that can do that. So there is a reason why uh, the Treasury and perhaps the elitists that run the government and run the Fed, they don't want just anybody to be president because that would mean that that person would be able to look at all the dirty books that are floating underneath the surface at the Treasury. The department I'm referring to is the Exchange Stabilization Fund a department that is pretty much the warehouse for all the currency and the black money that comes out of uh, heroin production and who knows what money is funneling in and out at any given time. Counterfeit money floats through there as well. The president is the only person that can look at that and say, hey, there's a problem here. Nobody else can audit it. Nobody in Congress can look at it. The Exchange Stabilization Fund. ZeroHedge.com is a very uh, vocal uh, antagonist to what's happening in the government when it comes to the Exchange Stabilization Fund and you can research that in depth if you really want to. But what really is going on is they pick your president. They pick our president. They hand pick that person. There's no process involved in politics anymore. It's all bought and paid for. And I believe that the only way we're going to get any kind of accountability from our government and from the Fed and from the Treasury is if we have a president that can think for himself and who isn't bought off and paid off like Barack Obama, the puppet, the puppet president. We need a person with an intelligence far greater than Barack Obama's, and I've got it. I've got a tested IQ that, that surpasses Barack Obama by far. Go ahead. Yeah, but that's kind of, that kind of insults puppets. I mean, come on. They, uh, You're right. Obama's worse than a puppet. He is worse than a puppet. He's a smelly puppet. He's a puppet that's been uh, sitting in the dank closet and mildewing for too long. Barack Obama is essentially very, very sad as a person. And he's taken our country down that sad road. 
You see, when you lie, cheat, and steal to get elected, when you tell the American people you're a Christian when you're a Muslim, that you're heterosexual when you're homosexual... Next term, a prison term. That would be nice. <laughs> I agree. Carl said his next term should be a prison term. I think that would be good. Uh, I am afraid for my own security, Critic Smash, but I don't live in fear. I have uh, preparations, great security system. I've got the ability to arm myself and defend my castle in the state of Washington. We have the castle law. So anybody who does attempt to break my sphere of, of silence or safety, my sphere of safety, or the circle of, uh, what was that thing in the, uh, meet the, the circle, of trust. circle of trust, meet the Fockers. That's right. <laughs> my circle of trust, if it's broken, I can essentially do mortal damage to somebody attacking my home or trying to break in. And that law is in place to defend people. So I'm not really in fear, fear. And I must remind you, FDR said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And he's right. We don't need to live in a state of fear, folks. But we need to start realizing that our country is not what it used to be. They're trying to systematically try to break it down and destroy it. They're trying to ruin it. Need to do is break them down and destroy them. Well, what we need is a nonviolent approach, and the only way we can do this nonviolently, Carl, is through a political action like a third party. Now, I hate to drill this home, folks, but it's the only way we're going to get accountability from any of the people in Washington. Now, I was having a discussion with somebody today about the idea of the government. You know, it's run uh, in such a way that people make laws that impose penalties on people for. Uh, you know, not paying a parking fee or flying through a toll booth without paying. These laws and these arbitrary rules are all created by our representative republic, which doesn't necessarily represent the American people. Because I'm sure a lot of you, if you were asked, would you like to pay $79 for uh, passing through a toll booth without paying? Your answer would be, of course not. Or if you want to live in Chicago, you'd be paying that money to a foreign entity running the toll booth system. Yeah, Rahm Emanuel actually has foreign companies profiting a billion dollars a year from Chicago taxpayers who get bilked every time they go through the toll booths or pay parking fees. I'm, I'm telling you, the Democrats have sided with multinational corporations and so have the Republicans. They've sided with this globalization concept which is failing our country. Outsourcing still goes on. No new industries are forming in America under Obama. He's done next to nothing to stimulate the private sector. And the government jobs are still padded and, and bringing in 150000 a year like we have that money. Everybody in Congress seems to be okay with that. Here, what's sad is, partly what's sad is companies that claim to be American and making American products aren't really doing that. They're outsourcing like, like to China and stuff. Yeah. A good example, the American Girl Dolls, mm -hmm. you know, that it's yeah. like that people, parents play one to two, three hundred dollars. Yeah. I know this because Molly has like ten of them. Um, basically, um, they're made in China. And I don't understand how they can legally or claim that they're American Girl Dolls. I know. Because they're made in the country made in China and, they, and a lot of parents have said that I would rather pay a hundred or more dollars more for those things mm -hmm. they're collectibles yep and to have it made here in America than to have it made in another country because it's not truly an American girl though right exactly this is crazy uh, we've got a, a situation where China has literally taken over production in every area and there's not a lot of control. Now we support an ecological tariff of 15% on any, any product coming into the country from countries that are not in compliance with human rights and environmental safety. These are simple plans. It's not like a 30% tariff, it's a 15% tariff. It's not gonna destabilize trade with China or any other country. If China can comply with our basic requirements, which is a 15 minute in-camera edited tape of their production process, and sign an affidavit saying that we can come into their country at any time unannounced and check their processes to make sure they're environmentally safe, then they can avoid the 15% tax, the tariff tax. So that's something that we're proposing. But that's going to make people accountable in other countries. Right now they're not. They can do whatever they have. 
Uh, I have a lot of interesting things to talk about, but I can't fit it all into one recorded message. So I'm going to continue talking to the entire show as we continue to break into social issues, everything from abortion to same-sex marriage. Now today, the government has stated they are going to pay out to the partners of homosexuals pension They're plans in the military. Fighting evil are and the government supporting terrorists. It seems like they right. are in other countries. They are. It's seemingly uh, crazy the way our country is uh, seeding rebellion around the world. Now, I want to remind you, too, that Libya got a major change. I mean, Muammar Gaddafi was uh, taken out of power. The way they, the government did this is they sent NATO forces funding and resources to deliver to Al-Qaeda. The current president of Libya is former Al-Qaeda. Yeah. You do the math. You figure out what's going on because to me that sounds like our government is supporting Al Qaeda. Okay? That's wrong. And that should never have happened and it would never have happened under my watch. And frankly, the whole takedown of Muammar Gaddafi was financial. They wanted his oil, they wanted his gold, and they wanted his water. And they wanted to make sure that that happened. Now, that led to something else that happened, Benghazi. Now, the government isn't talking a lot about what happened at Benghazi. There was a story that broke about a week ago that 31 CIA agents were on the ground when Christopher Stevens was killed. Ambassador Chris Stevens was killed when 31 CIA agents were on the ground. Well, that story, you'll notice, has just disappeared from the news. Completely. It's evaporated. It was trumped by uh, uh, a worldwide concern over the dangers of Al-Qaeda. Uh, 19 bases were closed for two days. Our U.S. bases and embassies were closed for two days simply to make it seem like that story didn't really matter. They claimed there was a major Al-Qaeda threat and there was no evidence of an Al-Qaeda threat, but they managed to cover up the story about 31 CIA agents being on the ground. You want to know how I found out about this? I actually got a tweet from Donald Trump. Of course, everybody who's following Donald Trump got this tweet. It's legit, folks. People in the CIA are talking about it, but it's there's no credible story yet. What happened is the government is lie detector testing every single person that was in or related to that case on a weekly basis. Not to see if they're lying, but to see if they're talking to the press. So the CIA is doing a good job of managing this entire story so that no one asks any questions about Benghazi. Well then, that Benghazi story may very well lead us to why we funded, our country funded, the current president of Libya who is former Al-Qaeda. And we want to know what Chris Stevens knew that got him killed. I, I still have to know, and we need to find out about Benghazi. It may very well be the biggest cover-up under Obama, but I also believe well, I, that other cover-ups exist as well. Go ahead. Speaking of bases being closed, have you ever noticed that whenever the United States starts closing a whole bunch of bases, all of a sudden we end up in a conflict and have to reopen most, if not all, those bases? Yeah, I know. Exactly. We do. That I'm taking as a death threat, and uh, yes, from Anderson, I can't even spell death threat. Yeah, he just gave me a death threat over there, and I, I do take note of these, by the way, and we will copy the screen, and uh, we will definitely ban you. We have a zero tolerance for this type of behavior, James. Yeah, I'm going to have to. But anyway, folks, this is exactly what we've been dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, people threatening my life. Uh, some guy, some stalker threatened to sue me yesterday. Uh, for what? Uh, telling him or other people that he was a stalker when he is? I don't think it's possible that anything could be perceived as anything but the truth when it comes to people stalking us. But yeah, anytime you say you're going to bury somebody, that's a death threat. Yes, it is. Okay. I think it depends how you mean it, David. I mean, some people can say for, I mean, if they add something to it, then they can mean something else. But when they say, I'm going to bury you, obviously, we know what that means more likely. But some people can say, oh, I'm going to bury you in paperwork, you know, yeah. or something else. Thank you. Yeah, well, you guys go ahead and uh, enjoy the show from that perspective. I must tell you that the future of this country depends on a third party but not just any third party it has to be 
dedicated to the American people. It has to be able to form compromises between the left and the right. It has to be able to forge a fiscally sound policy that is appealing to social liberals at the same time. We have to be able to pull this off. If we don't, our country is going to drift into a, a flurry of, of anger and hatred, and ultimately it will evolve or devolve into a civil war. That's the problem that we're trying to avert. A third party would prevent that. A third party is the best solution in a situation where you need arbitration. Clearly, this country needs a third party. The budget, they can never find a good budget. The Democrats haven't proposed a budget for four years. They can't come to any agreement with the Republicans. Clearly, we've got a problem there. I promise a zero deficit in 2017. I have an idea. If they can't come up with a, a budget, then they shouldn't be getting paid at all. You're right. They should be, lose their paychecks if they cannot come up with a budget, and they basically are working for free because you know they're getting bribes anyway. Yeah. What's your opinion on the green card? Phantom Ray says, well, I believe that Barack Obama has given away a million per year, and there's no reason for that. A million green cards per year makes all these illegals legal. And even in one fell swoop, last summer, he gave 850,000 illegal aliens a free pass, almost like amnesty. So clearly hey, the green man, card's a problem. How do you expect us to live and work hey. if we don't get the free stuff? I know, man. Well, the deal is, you, you're a disabled American who is receiving some food stamps, right, Carl? So you have money coming in. But what if yeah, I told you the... Re um, I also got approved um, for... Um, it's the program I've been waiting for. It's actually, um, they, I got approved for that, but I'm being sent to a different program mm -hmm. um, as well. There basically is a referral from that program to the one, one that is similar to like where Molly goes. Okay. We, but the only difference is I'll have a job coach, a counselor. Um, Good. She That's basically great. has a workshop there. Mm -hmm. I won't have a workshop. I'll actually be going out, you know, so it's more for advanced disabled special needs adults good so you'll get some real world experience and try to uh, get a job in real time so you don't you know yeah i told them i want a job beating up people <laughs> i don't think they have a job for that but you know you like computers you're really good at repairing computers you might find a great job being a computer tech that might be really good sure there's a job beating up people but it would mean i'd have to work for the mob no we're, we're not we're not gonna ever you see I know, Carl, that you had a lot of anger all your life, and you're coming to me realizing that I'm dedicated to nonviolence. You know that. And I'm trying to help convince you that it's the best policy. You know, violence begets more violence. But you'll realize this I over time. I know what you mean. Though. I personally believe that. You could, yes, yeah. You can come up with a peaceful solution, that's fine. But my, I, I was always taught in my family, in our family of warriors, mm -hmm. that. If you use force, you use it with such such point that the person, for example, if you're in a fight, you take the person, put them down, and keep them down. You basically do it to kill, in a matter of speaking. Well, there you have it. You know, maybe maybe you could work at the new FEMA camps that Barack Obama has created across the country. There's about 800 Heck of them. No. You don't I want to be a guard at the FEMA know. camps. Well, they're hiring. You go to monster.com and you got hire. They're hiring people right now for FEMA guards. It's so they can man the internment centers for civilians. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to encourage you to do that because I don't believe in the FEMA camp process. I think FEMA's effort should be regional food supplies, not FEMA camps with fencing around them. I want to get rid of those FEMA camps. I know. Thank you. The government won't even admit that they're there and they're all over the place. They're manned and guards are everywhere. So we want to make sure that the FEMA camp thing goes away. As president, I will do everything I can to eliminate FEMA camps from the face of the earth. Okay, Carl, thanks for the uh, interaction tonight and coming into our guest chat. All of you can come into our tinychat.com slash third party show. I'm going to head out actually too. So okay, great. I've got to eat my snack and get ready to... Okay. Well, thank you for joining this recorded broadcast. I, I'm glad I could hang out with the Superman that we have here in our party. Great to have you, Carl. Uh, thank you. You recorded me. I didn't know you were going to record me. Otherwise, I'd have kept one background up. Ah, <laughs> no, people like to see different backgrounds, and I think you know it's all good. And it will help promote your awesome Carl show. You don't want to forget that. 
All right. Yeah, season three starts September 27th. Excellent. Okay, take care and good luck with your workout. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, catch us every night, 6 to 9. Weeknights. We'll be there. And tomorrow night we're going to be talking about technology, Technology Thursday. But if you want to hang out, any time is good for us. We're always available multicasting on the Internet and bringing you multiple uh, different topics to talk about every single night. Take care.